I have that little sign above, actually the, <laughs> the laundry room door. It says, life is fragile, handle with prayer. And that is so true. Uh, life is fragile. Life is very fragile. And it's so fragile that by ourselves, um, we certainly would perish, we would break. Uh, but we live in a new covenant, which uh, has brought us life and immortality and has brought light through the finished work of Christ. And I wanna read a Psalm just for your encouragement, uh, just to assure you of your assurance before God, to assure you that your life in Christ is secure and that in spite of our fragility, we are secure in Christ. And many people do not read this passage with the cross in mind, but I do. Again, I see, and I'm sort of uh, giving you a little bit of a precursor of when I do ultimately come to Psalm 121 in my Christ in the Kingdom series. I think I've only gotten to Psalm 75 for, uh, for now, but I'm going to jump forward. I will lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Again, this is Psalm 121. Now listen to what he says here. I think a lot of Christians uh, sometimes listen to the fear mongers, listen to those who are of the human-centered persuasion, uh, those who are driven to worship the human will. And uh, they are religionists and they attempt to bring fear and they attempt to bring bondage and um, by accusing our moral failures, accusing us of our moral failures as if somehow our moral failure will uh, nullify our salvation. This is a new covenant. It says in verse three, he will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. That language is, is reminiscent of what we see regarding the sun in, uh, the, in Isaiah chapter 60 and of course, Revelation 21 and 22. Uh, the city has no need of the sun because the lamp the, light, uh, the lamb is the lamp and the light of the city. And we are his temple and he is our temple, the word of God says. The Lord will keep you from all harm. This is the harm of those accusations, the accusations of Satan. And it is, any, any, uh, any idea that teaches us that somehow our foot can slip and we could somehow fall out of the city, fall out of God's grace, fall out of the finished work of Christ, it's blasphemy. It's blasphemy. It is blasphemy to say that you can use, lose the finished work of Christ, lose your salvation. It's an affront to Christ. He says, the Lord will keep you from all harm. We're going to go through lots of times of, again, a seeming fragility, but God will keep us from it. He will keep us from that. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. How does he do that? Through the blood of Christ. That's how he keeps us from harm constantly. He protects us from accusation. Paul said, who shall lay a charge against God's elect? The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. That's all around. And we have to remind ourselves of that. Psalm 121 is a Psalm of assurance. It's a psalm that assures you that the Lord keeps you. The Lord will not allow your foot to slip ever, ever. Yes, you're going to fall into this or that transgression. And uh, the word of God says he has forgiven our trespasses. He has removed our transgressions as far as the east is from the west. That's what he's done. That's how he keeps your feet from slipping. You are founded upon the rock. Christ. The gates of hell will not prevail against it. The gates of hell will not prevail against the church. And if you are a member of the body of Christ, you are in Christ, you're a new creation, then, and the gates of hell will not prevail against you as an individual. So be assured of that. Be confident in the blood of Christ. And just be thankful every day. 
That's all God wants from us. He just wants thanksgiving and praise for his finished work. God bless you richly as you meditate on the fact that your sins are gone.